Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com with my Mid-Year Climate Crisis Report. Every good American knows that as carbon dioxide builds up in the atmosphere, our days are getting warmer. In fact, billionaire Bill Gates says there's a very simple relationship between carbon dioxide and temperature. Let's take a look at that. In this graph, I plotted the percent of days between January and July, which were over 70 degrees in the United States. As you can see, the peak year was 1934, when 50% of days were over 70 degrees between January and July. There's been a slight downwards trend since the 19th century, and this year was the lowest on record. Only 38% of days have been above 70 degrees. The next lowest was in 1983, when the skies were darkened with soot from a volcanic eruption in Mexico. So as carbon dioxide has increased, the frequency of 70 degree days in the United States has declined. The data set I'm using for this is the United States Historical Climatology Network, which is by far the best and most complete data set in the world. It consists of more than 1,200 stations scattered fairly evenly around the United States. There is a somewhat larger concentration of stations in the eastern United States, but for the most part, the United States Historical Climatology Network is a very accurate representation of weather patterns in the United States. And here's the same graph for January through July, percent of days above 80 degrees Fahrenheit in the United States. Once again, 1934 was the warmest year. There's been a downwards trend, and this year was the lowest on record. Only 25% of days in the United States so far this year have been above 80 degrees Fahrenheit. As carbon dioxide has increased in the atmosphere, the frequency of warm days in the United States has declined. It's quite clear that increasing carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere are not causing an increase in the number of warm days, and that the relationship between carbon dioxide and temperature is not the simple one which Bill Gates thinks it is. And it's not just warm days which have declined in the United States, it's also hot days. This graph shows the June through August percent of days above 90 degrees Fahrenheit at all United States Historical Climatology Network stations. As you can see, there's been a sharp downwards trend in the 1930s and 1950s were much hotter than it has been in recent years. Now let's look at burn acreage in the United States through August 5th. This year has been the third lowest in the past 11 years. This data is from the National Interagency Fire Center. It shows that the peak year of the last 11 was in the year 2011. There's been a little over 2 million acres burned in the United States so far this year. Now let's compare that to longer term data. Let's go back and look at the data back to 1916. This graph from the United States Forest Service goes back to 1916. And it shows that prior to 1960, there was a lot more burn acreage in the United States than there is now. In fact, during the 1930s, when it was very warm and dry in the United States, burn acreage was about 10 times larger than it is now. The New York Times reported in 1938 that there was a forest fire every three minutes in the United States during 1937, and that they burned 22 million acres of forest. And if we go back even further to pre-industrial times, the government reports that there were about 145 million acres burned annually. That's much larger than we get now. Next, let's look at what's happening with Arctic sea ice. The Sierra Club says it's all going to be gone by 2013, and Nobel laureate Al Gore says it may all be gone by 2014. But there's lots of sea ice in the Arctic. This graph is from the Danish Meteorological Institute, and it shows sea ice extent every day for the past five years. The red line is the current year. You can see that the ice was melting fairly quickly back in mid-July, but it slowed down quite a bit. And in fact, the melting is extremely slow right now, as I'm about to show you. This map shows in red the ice which has melted over the past five days. As you can see, it's primarily a thin strip facing towards Siberia. Most years this would be peak melt season, and there would be a lot more red on the map than is showing this year. And alarmists have a really big problem coming up. The area north of 80 degrees latitude is about to drop below freezing for the winter. And there's also been very cold air hanging out north of Alaska, which is keeping the ice from melting. So it looks like climate alarmists are running out of time for their ice-free Arctic. Of course the weather can change, and the ice can melt fairly quickly if it does. But the way things stand right now, the prospects do not look good for climate alarmists. 
This graph from the Danish Meteorological Institute shows in red temperatures north of 80 degrees latitude. As you can see, there's only a few more days left before it drops below the blue line, which is the freezing mark. There's not going to be a lot of melting occurring near the North Pole. Next, let's look at Greenland, which every good citizen of the world knows is melting down like crazy. This graph shows the surface mass balance of the Greenland ice sheet going back to the 1st of September last year. From September 1st through mid-June, the Greenland ice sheet surface gained about 500 billion tons of snow. And over the past two months, the snow has been melting and the surface has lost about 200 billion tons of snow. The melt season is just about over on the Greenland ice sheet. And it looks like the surface is going to end up with a net gain of a little less than 350 billion tons of ice, which is just below the 1981 to 2010 median. Of course, surface melting is not the only way which Greenland loses ice. It also loses ice through glacier calving. But glacial calving has a lot more to do with the climate of the past than with the climate of the current year. and is caused by an excess amount of snow building up in the interior, which causes the ice to flow to the sea in rivers called glaciers. This graph shows the surface mass balance for the past four years. 2017 and 2018 were well above average. Last year was well below average, and this year looks like it's coming in a little bit below average. But summing it up over the past four years, the surface mass balance is probably a little bit above average. There is no indication that Greenland is melting down. We're close to the hottest part of summer, and this is what the center of the Greenland ice sheet looks like right now. It's very snowy and the temperature is 14 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 10 degrees Celsius. This graph shows temperatures in the center of the ice sheet over the past month. As you can see, the warmest temperature they've had is about minus 5 degrees Celsius. You're not going to get a lot of ice melting at that temperature. At the end of 2018, National Geographic reported unprecedented ice loss in Greenland and the catastrophe that meant for Earth. And a few weeks later, National Geographic reported that Greenland's most famous glacier, the Jacob Chauvin Glacier, was actually growing. But that doesn't mean melting is over. Now let's go back and look at the graph from the Danish Meteorological Institute. There was actually a very large increase in ice during the year 2018. National Geographic described the large 2018 increase in ice as an unprecedented ice loss. George Orwell said, Early in life, I learned that nothing is ever reported correctly in a newspaper. Mark Twain said, if you don't read a newspaper, you're uninformed. And if you do read a newspaper, you're misinformed. Newspapers are bad, and cable news is even worse. Toto doesn't like people who lie to him, so he spends his time pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda. You can visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com.